Now, whenever uh, you have cell turnover, the nucleic acids are released, and you can have, um, so the, the guanine nucleotides can go directly to the salvage pathway, so you can have GDP go to the salvage pathway to produce GTP, ADP can produce ATP, or they can be further degraded down to their uh, bases. So adenosine can go straight into the, or actually, so adenosine can go to an inosine, but it, adenine can also be degraded to IMP, which can go into the salvage pathway. And so you'll notice whether it releases the the inorganic phosphate or the ammonium, the ammonium first uh, will depend where it can go into the salvage pathway. So the point being that at any point during its degradation, it can go back into the salvage pathway. With the exception of guanosine, it has to be uh, uh, degraded all the way down to guanine to go back into the salvage pathway. And ultimately, they're broken down to xanthine. Now, the only time they're broken all the way down to xanthine is if adequate ADP, or, I mean ATP and GTP are both present. If you don't have enough, they're going to go into the salvage pathway. But with adequate ATP and GTP, you get xanthine, and xanthine gets broken down to uric acid. And uric acid, you remember, is one of the forms of nitrogenous waste that we can excrete by the kidneys. Uric acid is produced from hypoxanthine uh, and xanthine. And it's, uh, the first step is uh, being acted on by the enzyme xanthine oxidoreductase. And xanthine oxidoreductase actually catalyzes both steps. And now xanthine oxidoreductase has two properties. It can oxidize or it can dehydrogenate. And which pathway it's going to go through is going to depend on the levels of cellular NAD. If NAD levels are low, it's going to do an oxidation, two oxidation steps. If NAD levels are high, it's going to do two dehydrogenation steps. Now the benefit of having high NAD levels is that if we're doing dehydrogenation, we prevent the formation of peroxide in both of these steps. Now the drug allopurinol will actually inhibit both activities by xanthine oxidoreductase. So if you're undergoing chemotherapy, something you may also be given is allopurinol because of something called tumor lysis syndrome. So tumor lysis syndrome. What happens uh, is during chemotherapy, uh, you have uh, all your tumor cells are basically turning over. You have such high cell turnover, it's releasing the nucleotides, and those are being degraded to hypoxanthine and xanthine, and ultimately to uric acid. And uric acid has a very low solubility in, in aqueous solutions. So uh, you get a too high of a concentration of uric acid, and it will precipitate forming uric acid crystals. Now, depending on where it precipitates will dictate what problems you have. Typically, it will precipitate either in the kidneys, uh, causing kidney problems, or it will precipitate in the joints, causing gouty arthritis. And so by taking allopurinol, you'll actually prevent this from happening, and so you won't be able to produce the uric acid, and you won't get the, uh, the precipitation. Now, pyrimidines slightly different. What happens with them is that they are uh, broken down to liberate the ribose phosphate. So you see here we get the ribose phosphates being liberated. And then the pyrimidine bases are uh, broken free as well. So notice that uh, CMP and DCMP are first converted into either uridine, which is converted to uracil, or um, deoxyuridine, which is converted to uracil. So whenever you're producing pyrimidines, uracil gets uh, formed into, so from in DNA specifically, uracil is uh, transformed into uh, TTP, but in, the, in breaking down, the cytidine is converted to uracil. So uh, building up, you go to uracil to thymine, breaking down, you go to cytidine to uracil. So the first part of the degradation of pyrimidines is uh, basically breaking open the nucleotide to form uracil and thymine and releasing the 
the sugar phosphate. Uracil gets further broken down into beta alanine. Now, beta alanine is an amino acid that we don't use in protein synthesis. It's not alanine, it's beta alanine. And this just gets excreted in the urine. Thymine is further broken down into beta amino isobutyrate. Now, beta amino isobutyrate is only made through this pathway. And so in chemotherapy, the amounts of this excreted in the urine is uh, used as kind of a, a tool to measure cell turnover in, cam in cancer therapy. So for the most part, this gets excreted, but it can also be used uh, for... Uh, it can be actually turned into malonyl-CoA and used in fatty acid synthesis or it can be converted into succinyl-CoA and used in the TCA cycle. So FA synthesis, fatty acid synthesis, or TCA cycle. And that wraps up all of biochemistry for block one. Now, Dr. Martin had some SLMs that he posted that he didn't lecture on. I may uh, work through those as well. I'm not sure yet. But as far as that goes, this is the end of the actual lectures for medical school block one.